So hi everyone. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about the uh, OVAL standard and uh, how we leverage it as well as the uh, Cisco public APIs in order to automate uh, vulnerability assessments. So my name is uh, Sebastian Pouplin. I'm a network automation architect at uh, Telecommunications and I'm uh, primarily responsible to automate uh, the delivery and uh, management of our uh, network edge uh, services. So these are uh, my favorite DevNet resources that I've been using for this project. So uh, as you can imagine, uh, we'll see around the uh, vulnerabilities, right? Resources such as the uh, OpenVil uh, API, the Cisco API console, as well as the uh, incident response team GitHub repository. I'm just going to give you a quick walkthrough uh, the overall uh, standard. So basically, it stands for uh, Open Vulnerability Assessment uh, Language. And uh, it's an open source community effort in order to standardize uh, vulnerability assessment across uh, different systems. So although I'm going to focus today primarily on the uh, Cisco network devices, right? Uh, the aim of this uh, standard was to uh, uh, standardize the way you are going to run a, a vulnerability assessment on the, on the target system. And uh, you have basically three key steps uh, to run uh, during the assessment, regardless of the uh, target uh, system you're assessing. And uh, these steps basically consist in uh, collecting machine state data, uh, essentially operational data, such as a uh, version of your system, uh, as well as configuration data. So meaning uh, you are going to actually check the actual configuration of your target system uh, in order to find potential vulnerabilities, as well as uh, uh, reporting the results uh, in a common format. Um, so although it's an open source standard, it's uh, funded by the US Department of Homeland Security. And uh, the overall board uh, members include all the major uh, enterprise IT software VMs, such as obviously Cisco, Red Hat. So the way vulnerability assessment is performed with uh, OVAL, um, so the process is quite straightforward in the sense that you are really have two questions to ask and answer for, and uh, the end result must be a Boolean kind of answer, right? So are you affected by the vulnerability? Is a true or false uh, answer, right? And these two questions are essentially around uh, what to check and what's expected. So by what to check, we basically we mean what do we have to verify on the target device, uh, whether it's uh, a particular configuration line or a particular uh, version, and then uh, the output I'm expected uh, to satisfy the uh, criteria. Right? And uh, for a particular vulnerability definition, obviously you can have multiple criteria and uh, uh, you can have multiple checks to perform Really, at the end of the day, right, it's a boolean answer, meaning that if you match all the criteria, then yeah, you can. So here's a, an example, a practical example, actually, of uh, vulnerability definition in uh, OVAL format. And again, although I'm focusing on Cisco today, uh, if you look at uh, uh, other systems, right, the vulnerability is presented in, in the same format. And um, uh, obviously, yeah, the first uh, XML tags are going to be around some uh, metadata specific to the vendor. Uh, or to the uh, OVAL definition publisher. Uh, so you have things like the um, vulnerability title, the uh, Cisco advisory, and then uh, some uh, hyperlinks. But yeah, the most important part is uh, start with the criteria uh, tags, and that's where you are going to see the actual test uh, that you have to perform on the on the target system. So here for this particular vulnerability, right, uh, we have this test, which basically consists in uh, checking whether IPSL responder is enabled on the target device. So if I go to the next slide, uh, you are going to see essentially these two questions I was mentioning before. So what to check, right? So you want to check the output of a show running configuration. Uh, so we see the commands you are going to run on, top on the target system is show running config. And uh, what's expected? The output you expect uh, from this uh, test, right? And here we are expecting to see uh, IPSL responder in the running configuration. So if I go back to the uh, definition, right? Uh, if I see IPSL responder in the show running config, right? it means that this test is satisfied, and that means I'm meeting the criteria. Uh, so if after I'm also matching the area 60 version on the target system, then uh, I'm actually uh, meeting both criteria, and then I can report that I'm being affected by this vulnerability. So then these are some uh, uh, overall external resources uh, that you can have a look, uh, such as the, um, for example, the GitHub repository where all the uh, vulnerability definitions are being stored, uh, as well as uh, the uh, Jovo CM uh, link, which is basically the software library we use in our, our application to pass the overall definition. Go through the uh, application we have created using integrating with Cisco API and leveraging the uh, overall standard. And essentially, we add 
we had one major problem, right, is that we are managing over 10,000 Cisco network devices, and uh, typically vulnerability assessment was performed uh, manually. So you can imagine uh, uh, this process not being scalable at all, when, especially when you have a large number of devices. And uh, uh, we had to automate uh, the vulnerability assessments and the software management lifecycle of our devices uh, as our number of managed devices is, uh, uh, keeps growing uh, every day. That's how we, we like, solve our problem, is by uh, creating our own vulnerability scanner. And uh, essentially, because we started really from scratch, uh, you know, we could uh, use modern uh, architecture and the latest uh, technologies available uh, in software development. And um, on top of the overall standard, right, uh, we also have uh, a couple of API integration with uh, Cisco, such as the Open Vulnerable API, obviously. We also suggest a software API and as well as uh, SN, SN24 API, uh, so we can get uh, information just by passing our uh, devices uh, serial number. And one of the key outcomes uh, in developing our own map scanner is that uh, we managed to reduce uh, vulnerability audits from two weeks to, to 20 minutes. That's a quite efficient way to, <laughs> to do a vulnerability assessment compared to, uh, to before. So that's the um, high-level architecture. Uh, of our this uh, kind of application, primarily running on the Kubernetes, and uh, we have developed uh, uh, different uh, services which can basically scale horizontally across uh, multiple Kubernetes nodes. We also have obviously uh, east-west integration. So the one I was mentioning is the Cisco Big API, as well as the Power BI uh, analytics. So we do uh, we do a lot of analytics, you know, uh, uh, around vulnerabilities and the Cisco APIs uh, information we get from Cisco API is helping a lot in that sense. So, for example, whenever a new vulnerability is published, you can uh, immediately see which customer uh, is currently at risk or which vulnerability is currently uh, really problematic and uh, needs immediate attention. We also have integration with our uh, internal inventory systems. So, one of these is quite famous and simple. Uh, that's basically the systems we use to, uh, to manage all our uh, network devices. And then, yeah, uh, we, we basically scan our network devices across both uh, private network like MPLS and as well as public uh, IP network. And uh, yeah, we can access devices uh, directly, right? Uh, so we can just connect directly from our application to the device and uh, run the vulnerability assessment. But we can also make use of uh, uh, what we call a bastion SSH gateway, right? So if you want to reach devices which are not directly accessible, right, you can make use of, uh, of an SSH gateway to, uh, to proxy the, uh, the connection and uh, access them. Uh, so this is the software stack, right? So Codebase is essentially developed in uh, Golang and uh, Java, and uh, we use uh, gRPC for the uh, uh, services um, uh, intercommunication. For the front end, we use Angular and uh, data persistency for our main backend databases on PostgreSQL. And uh, yeah, we use as well Redis for the uh, cache store and application states. And our cloud, cloud team is based on the Kubernetes, as you have seen before, and uh, as well, currently hosts uh, all our workloads, the Amazon Web Services. So with that, uh, for the view, uh, I'm going to uh, go through a demo. OK, so I'm going to log in to the uh, RV scan application. And uh, before jumping straight to the vulnerability scans, uh, I'm just going to show you some of the building blocks that we have in order to manage our devices and vulnerability on our devices. So we have a kind of simplified credential manager where uh, our users can uh, essentially uh, store the different uh, type of credentials uh, that uh, they want to use to access the device. Right, I'm showing you Cisco, typical Cisco SSH credentials, but as well create credentials for uh, uh, different type of systems. And as well, uh, that's uh, where we store our SSH uh, gateways that we can use uh, uh, in order to access uh, devices. And uh, again, we can store the credentials to the SSH gateway as well as uh, test connections before we actually run the vulnerability scans to make sure uh, we have a proper connectivity in place. Now, essentially, currently in our application, we have uh, two types of scans that we support. Uh, one is called the uh, on-demand scan, which is like essentially like on-the-fly scan. So you want to scan just devices which are not part of an inventory. You just want to have a quickly, quickly get a, a view of uh, uh, vulnerabilities being affected, uh, are currently affecting your, your local devices and uh, the credentials uh, that you want to access these devices and, uh, and then launch, uh, launch the scan. But the one I really wanted to show you today is uh, uh, inventory scan. So here you see some uh, 
uh, demo devices uh, that we have currently on our inventory system. And uh, you're going to see a, a mixture of information from our inventory system, but as well as from uh, Cisco uh, public APIs that we really leverage in order to do some accurate vulnerability assessments as well as uh, uh, analytics. So if I click on this device, we are going to see uh, some detailed inventory information. So basically the current host name, management, uh, IP address, the OS type, uh, OS version, uh, plot ID, so that's coming from Cisco API. Uh, serial number is coming from inventory system and suggested software is coming from uh, Cisco API. And um, uh, you are going to see as well the latest uh, vulnerability scan results. And uh, most of this information um, what of this metadata right, that we use to enrich the overall data is coming from uh, OpenView uh, API, right? So things like the advisory ID, uh, the publication date, the CV, the uh, security impact rating, as well as CV, CVSS score. Uh, it's coming from Cisco API, as well as the hyperlinks where we can directly go through the uh, uh, Cisco security advisory and uh, maybe have a more detailed uh, look. And uh, we also have hyperlinks to the uh, national vulnerability database uh, if you want to have a more uh, generic view of the, of the CVs. Okay, and uh, we also keep track of every vulnerability scan. So we can see, uh, we can, uh, every time basically we scan a device, we can see how many vulnerabilities were found uh, uh, during each uh, scan. Uh, and as well, we keep track of a kind of, uh, yeah, like a vulnerability timeline. Or you can see uh, uh, with uh, each scan jobs, right? You can see which vulnerability was uh, discovered. So we can see when the when our vulnerability was uh, discovered at a particular time, and uh, yeah, uh, we we display that we display that as kind of uh, diff uh, accuracy on the for example on the GitHub. Also, you can see uh, different icons on the status. So yeah, we see if uh, if a device is running a, a version uh, suggested by Cisco, and uh, we have run a vulnerability scan. Uh, we can see that uh, the version is uh, uh, yeah, vulnerability free, and uh, you can see uh, we like display different icons to show a quick view of which, you know, which device is actually uh, at risk or not. And uh, so yeah, uh, let's go for a quick scan. So I'm just going to scan uh, these devices, and uh, I'm going to select here yeah, my uh, credentials, as well as I'm going to use an SSH gateway to scan the devices. And we have a stream uh, uh, between our agents to our uh, controller. So we basically, uh, we can stream uh, all the logs so we can have a kind of a real-time view of uh, what's happening on these devices. And uh, one step we take before trying to access devices is we always download the latest uh, vulnerability definitions. So we, we always have the latest uh, definitions published uh, by, uh, by Cisco. Typically it takes, you can take between five seconds to one minute to scan the device, uh, depending on the latency, right? Uh, if you have to switch the device. Uh, one of the important aspects is that every scan job is treated as a batch job, meaning that uh, we don't scan devices one by one. They are, they are all scanned. Uh, you can see we already finished with some devices, and then you see the, the mean target uh, scan duration is uh, roughly seven seconds, which is which is quite okay. And uh, yeah, the scan is not finished, and uh, we can we can view the results. And you see the results for this particular scan job. And you see that uh, yeah, for some devices, we haven't found any vulnerability. And uh, for these devices, uh, we found 17 vulnerabilities. Yeah, we can, we can classify the vulnerability and see which one is, uh, is uh, critical, uh, the critical to high security impact. And again, all this information that you see, all this metadata about vulnerability that you see is, is all coming from uh, Cisco or you know, KPI. And uh, yeah, finally, also, we, uh, we also keep track of uh, the scan jobs that we are running uh, on, our, on our devices. So these are, these are more for uh, treating or audit purpose, right? Uh, and uh, we also save the uh, job logs uh, for each scan, right? So then uh, later on we can, uh, you know, we can perform some search if you want, if you want to look for a particular scan jobs. And uh, uh, you know, some users are reporting uh, issues in scanning some devices. You know, we can, we can, uh, uh, for example, have a look uh, in the historical logs uh, directly from uh, from our from our web interface you know, without, without having to connect. To the controller and look at the log files, and uh, yeah, we can make as well keyword uh, search in our in our job logs. And uh, yeah, for example, here if I look for a connection refused message, right, uh, it's going to show me the job that the uh, connection refused. I can see uh, I can see this particular device has uh, some issues. Uh, uh, we have some issues to connect to. Yeah, so you can see if it's a credential uh, issue or or, that, or just an activity issue. All right, all right, guys. So uh, hopefully, I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.